Thank you for tuning in and taking time to listen to this message. I believe it's going to be a word that will challenge, inspire, and encourage you to live a life that is pleasing and glorifying to God. See it? Hopefully you are not the ones that do it. But you'll see this again all over social media, on YouTube videos, on Instagram, on Twitter. If you know or if you have seen anybody famous or anybody who has a decent amount of people following, every single time, not every other time, every single time they post or say or do anything. Doesn't matter what it is. They can take their two-year-old little girl and walk down the street to the grocery store, very innocent, not doing anything, not looking for publicity, not hurting anybody, and said anything to anybody, and somebody say, why is her little girl hair so nappy? <laughs> why she got on those shoes? Because I just came from the gym. Why is she walking like that? You know, is her back hurting? You know, um, why is she going to that store? You know, why don't she go to this store? She got more money than that. You know, did she lose her job? And that's why she got a shop. And it's there. The proof is there. Just go to YouTube. Go, go to any social media site. Anybody who has mass following, you'll see anything that they put up. It's always something in there where people are just looking for opportunities to rip down and to tear apart. Your gifts create a platform for you, but creates a target. But what God has shown with us here is that as a body, we all have different functions, different graces, right? But the thing that's been tearing us apart as a body of Christ, and I said this at the beginning, is lack of unity. Unity is the big thing. If we could all come together, we could take over this world. If we could all come together, there wouldn't be so many denominations. As a matter of fact, if there were a bunch of denominations, nobody would even care because it would be like, I still love you the same. Whatever your denomination is, then you flow in your gift, you flow in your gift, you flow in your strength, you do what you do, and we all work together as a body, right? But this is what happens. Instead of unity, we look for uniformity. I have to explain this. Instead of unity in the body of Christ, we're trying to create uniformity. Big difference. Unity is, hey, everybody, let's come together. We have one goal. I understand that we all have different ages. We all have different sizes. We all have different colors. We're all from different nations. We're all from different countries. We have different dialects. But the one goal, the one thing that we have in mind at the core and at the center is all of us love Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. And we love each other. So let's make this work. That's unity, right? But what we've been doing sometimes, not everywhere, but in the body of Christ as a whole, we seek uniformity, uniform. We seek, okay, I know we kind of got this thing at the core, which is Jesus, but I feel like I want to do it this way. You know, I, I respect what Jesus did on the cross, but I, I just, I just feel like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we should go about it this way. Maybe we should go about it that way. Maybe we don't have to preach. You know, maybe we can just teach, but not just me doing my thing and we come to the same middle ground and the same core. But instead, if I teach and you preach, then I can't fellowship with you because you're a preacher and I'm a teacher. So we don't have anything in common. If, you know, I'm a little bit more charismatic and you're a little bit more chill, then our churches can't come together because we have nothing in common. <laughs> I ain't trying to get in trouble, man. <clears throat> if, if for some crazy reason we believe that there are different routes to salvation, then I can't talk to you. I can't speak to you. We can't be in the same room. We can't even have a clear discussion about what we believe. Because I feel like you're going to try to brainwash me and I'm going to try to brainwash you. Right? We know the answer to this. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Right? But people will come up with all this crazy... It's kind of like this. If we say, hey, <clears throat> let's get together and let's do a rally to promote the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Everybody, we're going to be unified, all right? 
we're going to wear the same color. Everybody's going to wear the same color. Everybody's going to show up and everybody's going to have on the color blue. Everybody say, hey, we're unified. Jesus is at the core. We've all come together and this is the one thing that we want to do together. We're all going to wear blue. But then uniformity, <clears throat> uni uniformity says, hey, I know, you know, you wanted everybody to wear blue, but let's try some different shades of blue, which would be creative. But what happens is the different shades of blue now says, okay, I know we're all moving in this direction to go to Christ and we're all going to wear blue, but I want to wear a different shade of blue. So because I have on a different shade of blue, I'm not going to march with y'all. I'm going to create my own march, hmm. right? I'm still going to get to Jesus, but I'm going to create my own march, wow. right? So y'all can march on Saturday. I'm going to march on Sunday because I have a different shade of who. And this is, this is what the denominations are. They're different shades of Christ saying, my Jesus is white. My Jesus is black. My Jesus is tan. My Jesus is orange. My Jesus is red. I'm using colors kind of as a surface, but it digs so much deeper. And we don't even want to comb into all the differences of the denomination. But that's exactly what it is. We have this one thing in common. We love Jesus. We love God. And we love each other. But then we allow everything else to get in the way. One of the worst things that you can do is put your mouth on a ministry that you don't understand. To put your mouth on a pastor you don't understand. To see a pastor, to see a minister, to see somebody fall from grace, not understanding the details, not knowing the background, not knowing the history, not knowing what happened except what you saw on the news, the reports that you saw, the gossip that you saw on social media, and then put your mouth on them because you think you know them. Because mm. I, you know, I watch them on TV every week, so yeah, I could tell. I, I knew he was like that because I could tell by the way he talked, and sometimes the way he moved around, you know, I could, I could just, I could tell that he had, so I'm not even surprised, right? There's a term, and I'm going to get ready to finish on this note. There's a term called, um, in the military, called collateral damage. <clears throat> and it's similar to just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What happens is, <clears throat> if, you know, I'm out working and, you know, say, you know, I'm out in the desert and a scorpion crawls on my foot and I see that I'm about to get bit, instead of just kicking the scorpion off or instead of just smacking them more instead of you know me just getting bit on my foot and just kind of taking care of it instead i take out the double barrel shotgun and i just blow off my entire leg right mm -hmm. it makes no sense right i'm going to take out a whole limb wow. right because i don't like what's going on on this one piece i'm going to take out a whole ministry right i'm gonna go join the church and I don't like what the pastor is doing, and so I'm going to join the church, and I'm going to create a whole bunch of discord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's never come out of your mouth before. But what discord looks like is, this is what the pastor said. Yeah, I know that's what pastor said, but this is kind of what I feel. That's discord, mm -hmm. right? That's collateral damage. Mm -hmm. That is... Instead of me dealing with this little issue that I have, I'm just gonna blow up everything around me, right? Instead of going, I'm about to dig deep, y'all. Instead of dealing with my personal issues and working out my own salvation, right? Instead, let me work it out through somebody else. Let me go ahead and do my surgery on you. Because if I can create a perfect you, then I'll feel like a perfect me, right? Ooh, that's ugly. And that's what happens when we see these other ministers, teachers, pastors, right? They're loving in their lane. They're doing what they've been graced to do, even though it doesn't look like what you have been called to do. But then we say, you know what? I don't care what he's saying. Let's just throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, the, the, we gave the baby a bath, right? The baby is now clean, but it's still sitting in dirty water, if you understand what I'm saying. You clean the baby, the water is now dirty, but you still got to pull them out of the water, right? You, you clean them up, the water is dirty. But then you just throw the baby out. Instead of just throwing out the water, the baby's clean, wipe the baby down, you know what I'm saying? But what we do is we put our mouth on these ministries because we don't understand them. We say, you know what? I don't understand what they're doing, so I, I just don't care. Whatever, they, they can do whatever. Or you, you say different things to drag other people into and say, hey, you shouldn't go to that church because I heard. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't talk to that minister because I heard. Or I saw, 
you'd be surprised how many things are just gossip. Y'all might be surprised when you get to heaven how many people actually made it there that you put your mouth on. You might be surprised at how many people fell from grace that God actually redeemed. You might mess around and be looking up and not looking down on people. <laughs> you might. I think we'd be really shocked if we were to find out what God has graced different people to do. You might be looking at somebody's ministry and you might say, uh, y'all only got five people in part of y'all's ministry, but guess what? Those five people that I just ministered to are future ambassadors for the world. Those five people are now going to go out to the nations and make missionaries out there in other nations are, are going to create disciples in other countries around the world. Now, if we're speaking from a natural perspective, from a business perspective, that pastor would get royalties from, from those five people that he sent out to evangelize and to disciple the rest of the world. But you're looking at the five people that they got right there. So let's bring it home. We're going to end on this note. Let's bring it home. So even you at your job, even you at school, even you wherever you are, you find yourself like, ah, oh, you know, this is, isn't really a big deal. You know, I just talk to someone. I just encourage them every once in a while. People are like, oh, leave them alone. You know, they're they a mess. Like, they don't affect you. And you go to this person and, hey, man, you know, I just want to let you know the door is open. If you ever need to talk, I just want to encourage you. Right? And people would ask you, hey, you know, some people aren't bold enough to ask this, but some people are. You know, what are you, what are you grossing? What's your, what's your net income? What's, what's, what's your net worth? Right? And you'd be ashamed to say, and the first thing that would come out of your mouth is, well, you know, we just started. You know, we're just getting started, so we're kind of building up, and so we haven't quite done anything yet because we haven't done it. You make up all these excuses, but once you reach a level of success that you're pleased with, that is success in your eyes, then it's much easier for you to look down on other people. It's much easier for you to stick your chin up in the air. It's much easier for you when you see things that you don't understand or that you don't comprehend or that look kind of crazy, kind of like the Pharisees and Sadducees, for you to say, you know what, that's not right. That's not gospel. That's not Jesus. How is it that they talked to Jesus, looked him in the eyes, the word manifested in flesh? This word right here that they would study and read and lay on their face in front of every single day, they were scholars. They were scholars of this word. But this right here was wrapped in flesh, standing right in front of them, but, but they didn't even recognize it. Because they'd allowed themselves to get puffed up. I'm, I'm, I promise y'all I'm going somewhere with this, if y'all can follow me just for a sec. So is it possible that if we submit our bodies, living sacrifices, we transform our minds, then we'll almost be complete puppets in God's hands to the point where he can elevate us to success. But then in that level of success, there is potential for me to be looking down on somebody else. That's what I get out of it, at least. I mean, I'm looking at verse three and I'm just like, why would he tell me to yield myself, transform my thinking and then come back in, in verse three and say, all right, wait a minute. But don't think too highly of yourself. Wow. Here we go. Verse four. It says, for as we have many members in one body. But all the members do not have the same function. Wait. Hold up. Wait. For as we having many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. Is it possible in verse 1 where he said present your bodies as living sacrifices? Just asking a question. Is it possible that he was saying, hey, all of these individual people coming together unified, present yourself as a body, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is a reasonable service. I know we've heard this verse before, Romans 12, 1. We've heard Romans 12, 2. Then we got down to verse 3, and it was like, uh, all right, I kind of understand it, but, but if you keep reading throughout the entire chapter and put everything in context, you actually find out that this chapter is talking about the body of Christ. You'll find out that the body is talk that, that this, this, this chapter is talking about the body of Christ having many members and needing each individual member to submit himself 
holy and acceptable unto God as his reasonable service, transform their minds, each member transforming their minds, being not conformed to the word of the world, each member, each member not thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to, right? Each member, because if the hand gets a little bit too prideful and decides one day, you know what? I'm gonna take a day off. It'd be pretty hard to feed yourself, right? It'd be, you, can, you can figure it out. I mean, all right, I got two hands. What if both of your hands decide to take a day off? Well, you say, well, I can figure it out. I can just put it on the table and I can lean down and pick it up with my mouth. You can say I can learn how to work with my toes, but wouldn't it be a lot easier if we had our hands, Amen. right? Amen. What if you're just walking up the street one day and your eyes have a spat with your feet? And you say, you know what, feet, I don't need you anymore. I can see clearly. I can see exactly where I want to go, but I don't need you, all right? I don't need you. And the feet just decide they want to stop working. So can your eyes still see from ground level? Because <laughs> that's where you're going to be without the feet, right? Can your eyes still see from ground level? But wouldn't it be much easier if you had the feet propping you up? So this is what happens in the body of Christ, right? We say, you know what? Feet, you're dirty. Hmm. How dare this ministry go out and try to minister to people at the club? Uh oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, we ain't supposed to be nowhere near the club. Matter of fact, Christians ain't even supposed to be woke at 11, 12 o'clock at night. Those are sinful hours. You ain't even supposed to be out the house, right? But how are we going to look at the feet, right? The body of Christ, right? The body of Christ, all made up of different members, different pieces, different parts that all have been given a specific grace for exactly what they do, right? You wouldn't look down at the feet. You know, if, if I were to drop this mic, I wouldn't look down at my feet and say, hey, feet, pick that up. That's what my hands are for, right? That's what the hands are for. Um, if, if, if I were to fall, I wouldn't look over at my ears like, hey, you know, push yourself up. That's not what my ears are for. My ears here. Every piece has a function. Every piece has a special grace to do exactly what it's been created to do. But what happens in the body of Christ, and this is where I'm about to step on some toes. What happens in the body of Christ, though, is that the pieces and the members that we don't quite understand, the ministries that are going into areas that a lot of other people are scared to go into because they don't understand it, right? Mm -hmm. Then they put their mouth on it and say, we're not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be going there. We're Christians. We have to avoid the appearance of evil, right? Mm -hmm. I know ministries, I know ministries that go out and they attack at the core human trafficking. And in order to attack the spirits behind human trafficking, you got to get dirty. Mm -hmm. They're not walking around in broad daylight. You're not going to sleep at 9 o'clock. You're waking up at 9 o'clock at night to go out to where they are. You know what I'm saying? And so how can we look at the feet and say, you know what, feet? You can't be a part of the body because you're dirty. You need to be more like the hands. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. We ain't never looked at no other churches like, you know what? That church needs to do a little bit more of this. They need to give a little bit more. Or, or this church, they need to do a little bit more outreach to the, to the inner city. They do too many outreaches on the, on the outskirts of the city. And they, they always go out to the suburbs, but they need to come into the city. And this one that always does it in the city, you know, they always go into projects. Maybe they need to go out to this area. And this area is missing it because they need to get this. This church, they sing too much. They always sing. I, every, so, every, other, every other minute, it's like every few minutes somebody get up to sing. They always sing in so many songs. This church, they preach too loud. Why does the preacher always have to talk? This church you go to, they just teach. They always just talk real calm and they never get excited. Why don't they ever get excited? They get more excited about the things of the Lord. When I go to this church, everybody always dress up. Why is everybody so dressed up? Why don't they just relax? Why don't everybody dress down? Why can't we wear jeans? When I go to this church, why do they always have on jeans? Why can't they dress up? Everybody piece and member has a different function. Yes. I wouldn't expect to walk around with my hands dirty like my feet might be if I'm walking around barefoot, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect my hands to get dirty. 
I want to, because I need this to go in my mouth. That's, that's part of its function, right? I wouldn't get on the ground and then lick the floor, right? That would just be nasty. So if, if you're a church that is the mouth, then I can't expect you to be out there with me on the streets and in the gutters and on the back hills of other countries and out in the sticks, right, where we're getting dirty because you're, you're not the feet. You're not the knees. You're not the legs. If you're a ministry, well, you know, people are like, well, you know, this church, you know, y'all never go nowhere. This church been here for 100 years. Y'all need to, you know, move your location or you need to go somewhere else. Or you need to start a whole bunch of locations. But maybe this is one of the organs of the body. Maybe this is something that needs to sit still. Maybe this is something that does not need to move around. Maybe this is something that needs to be stationary. Maybe this is something where I can't give up anything that I have that's a part of this because I can't go without my heart, right? Some ministries can be throned a little bit more than others. Some ministries that aren't producing can be chopped off. You can go without an arm. You can go without a foot. You can go without a leg. You're not going without your heart. You're not going without your brain, right? Would you agree? Mm -hmm. You're not going without blood. These ministers, these members, these elders, these bishops, these leaders, whatever you are, if you are a believer, you have a specific part in the body of Christ that you play, being connected to your church. You have a specific role in the body of Christ, and every member has a role. There's a special grace. This is what it says in verse 4. As we have many members... In one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. This is the good part. Having then gifts differing according to the grace given, that is given to us, let us use them. I'm not going on because the, the rest of that chapter gets real deep. I don't want to go too far over your head. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. We all have gifts. My pastor, Bishop Daniel Robinson Jr., Jr. he preached on this just this past Sunday about gifts and using all of your gifts, exhausting all of your gifts until you can't figure out what else to do, using everything God put in you to offer it back up to him. He said, what do you give God? What do you give Jesus who has everything? What do you give him? Even for Christmas, naturally. What do you give somebody who has everything? He said, you give him back what he gave you. Mm -hmm. He put gifts in all of us. So even here, saying that each member has a specific grace for what you were created for. And so that, in my mind, would make even more sense why the body would be unified because each church, each ministry, even each person within that ministry has a different grace. So who am I to tell you, you shouldn't have been talking to that lady because I saw her on the corner last week and she ain't no good and she's filthy so you don't need to be talking to her. But you have a special grace for that area. So when you go out there, instead of them influencing you, you're influencing them. That's one way to tell if you're graced in an area. You should be the influencer instead of you being pulled in. Amen. I just gave you that one for free. <laughs> if you have a special grace in a particular area, then it comes easily. It comes naturally. It comes almost without practice. Mm -hmm. It comes almost without even studying. This is not something that people can always teach you. Sometimes this is not even something that you can sit in a class. Sometimes it's not even something that your pastor or leader can teach you. But a special grace or gift on the inside of you, that an innate ability that you have from birth to operate in the flow and to function in this way. There are some things as a child when you're first born that the parents don't teach you. When you come out of the womb and they slap you on the butt, the parent doesn't say, hey, this is how you cry. Let me teach you how to cry. Let me teach you how to scream. It's innate. It's in you. It comes out automatically. Some things are not taught. Some things are in you automatically. And so you'll find yourself, 
you find yourself ministering to different people who other people won't minister to. You'll find yourself spending time. Christmas is coming up. Before Thanksgiving, we talk about this. We get around some of the most, quote unquote, unlovable people. Some of the people that ruin holidays every single time. Family that we go around that we, we dread going because we just don't want to be in that atmosphere. We know they're going to be smoking. We know they're going to be drinking. We know they're going to be cussing. We know somebody's going to ruin it. Somebody's going to have a fight. So-and-so been bumping heads with so-and-so and both of them are going to be there. So we got to keep them apart in separate rooms. Or we can't invite this person because this person is going to be there. Whatever it is. But with Christmas coming up, be mindful. What has God given me a special grace to do? I find myself, almost every job that I've ever worked on, almost every arena I've ever been in, whether it's job, whether it's school, whether it's side work, whether it's media, whatever it is, I always seem to find myself becoming really, really good friends with the person or the people in the office that everybody despises. It's weird. Because everybody else is just like, oh, stay away from them because they're crazy or they do this or they gossip or they blah, 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 blah. And already in your mind, you're like, okay, I don't even know them, but I've already made up in my mind who they are. And so most people, you just shut them down because you're like, hmm, I'm using wisdom. I'm not going to go anywhere around them. But if you have a special grace to be able to pull people up instead of being pulled down, then that might not be somebody that's going to pull you down. That might not be somebody that you need to stay away from. That might be somebody that you need to go to and say, hey, look, I know you kind of got a bad rap around here, but I don't got nothing against you. Right. <laughs> Me and you, we're good. What's going on? I noticed you're having a bad day. What's up? You need to talk. Whatever it is, people start looking at you crazy. People start treating you funny because you're guilty by association. People start coming up to you. So what was you and so-and-so talking about? Did they tell you about, did they ask you about, were they being nosy? Did they tell you that they did da 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 And they start running off all of this stuff, putting their mouth on somebody because they don't understand. How often have you, you don't have to raise your hand, how often have you put your mouth on somebody to later discover that the reason they did whatever they did that caused you to put your mouth on them was because something dramatic happened that you weren't even aware of. I know it's happened before, right? How dare she come to church like that? She ain't had nothing better to wear. All of her stuff hanging out, tempting all of these guys walking up in church like that. And then got the nerve to walk all the way up to the altar so everybody can see her. Quick to judge. And everybody would jump on the bandwagon because it makes that makes sense. She that was on the corner last night. Did some unspeakable things. Stayed the night there. Felt guilty. Woke up that morning, had nothing but the clothes on her back. Saw a sign. Decided to come in because she needed hope. And then the carriers of hope on the inside of the church don't release hope, but instead they release, release hate. Mm. You said it. Yeah. Instead they release hate. And that's exactly what it is. Even the Bible says, how can you say you love me, but you hate your brother? Mm -hmm. But I know we think hate is, oh, I'm going to stab you in the back. Ah, oh, man, I wish you would die. That's extreme hate. But what hate, what hate at the core is, is judgment. Hate is, you know what, even if I don't know you, I'm basically going to sum you up for what I think you are and basically rip you apart with my words and with my mind. Sometimes you don't have to say anything, but in your mind, you've already stripped them down to nothing. And you'll never go to them, you'll never go talk to them, you'll never be congenial around them, you'll never be polite to them because in your mind, you've already summed them up of who they are and what they're about. You know what I found where I've been in situations where I find myself being friends with a person that nobody else likes, which happens pretty, pretty, pretty often. And so if I'm good friends with you, maybe you're that person. <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> kidding. There's a lot of people strength so I gotta say I'm kidding, so I don't wanna get offended. But uh, what I've learned in a lot of those situations is that those same people 
that everybody put their mouths on and tear down, when they share why they do the things they do, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because then their story is, everywhere I go, I can never make friends. I always, you know, I always speak too soon. And I know that's my, that's my problem. You know, I just, I, I love so hard and I want people to like me so much because I've never really had a real friend. I've never really had somebody I can trust. And so every time I meet somebody, I just try to give them everything I have. And, you know, sometimes it's too much and it overwhelms people. Or, you know, sometimes I, you know, I just don't know how to control my, my emotions. And, and, and what really happened was, you know, in my past, this happened, that happened. And they'll come through and you'll find yourself sitting in the chair like, how did I get here? <laughs> Why are they telling me their whole life story, right? But it happens when you yield yourself and you open yourself up to be able to allow the grace that God has given you to flow freely so that you can reach somebody else that somebody's been putting their mouth on. And we do this. We do this sometimes without even thinking about it. We'll be, we'll be watching Joe Osteen on TV and we'll say, he got too much money. Why they got all that money? Why don't they give all their money to this neighborhood? Why don't they do more? Why don't they open up their doors because they got flooded? Why don't they do this? Why don't they change this? Why don't they do that? Why don't they... But did you give money? Did you open up your doors? Did you take a flight you know, to, to Texas and help somebody out? Did you send money to an organization? But he's been given a special, special grace for that area. But guess what happens though? Anytime you have a special grace, a special gift, special talent, whatever it is, everybody has one because God put it on the inside of us. Anytime there's something special on the inside of you and you operating in that, it creates a platform for you. We talked about this. We said this in, in, in verse three, for I say for the grace given to me to everyone who is among you to not think of himself more highly than he ought to because we know that this stuff is going to create a platform. Yielding yourself to God, transforming your mind, it's going to elevate you. So now he's telling us, okay, now you need to not think more highly than you ought to. So you're flowing in your gifts, it creates a platform for you. So guess what happens when you're elevated on a higher platform in a crowd of people? Now where you were blending in, nobody could see you, nobody cared about you. If you, know, you had on dirty pants, who cares? If you have on no shoes, nobody can give anything. Like if, if your hair is messed up, if your breath stinks, whatever it is, who cares? <laughs> Once you're on a platform, now you're in a space where you become a target. Because now everybody can see you from every angle, now that you're elevated. Every time you use your gifts and your talents that God put on the inside of you, it creates a platform. I'm helping somebody. It creates a platform. Use your gifts. It creates a platform. It will open doors for you. It creates a platform, and so now it makes you a target. I'm sure y'all see it. Hopefully y'all are not the ones that do it. But you'll see this, again, all over social media, on YouTube videos, on Instagram, on Twitter. If you know or if you have seen anybody famous or anybody who has a decent amount of people following, every single time, not every other time, every single time they post or say or do anything. Doesn't matter what it is. They could take their two-year-old little girl and walk down the street to the grocery store, very innocent, not doing anything, not looking for publicity, not hurting anybody, and said anything to anybody, and somebody say, why is her little hair, hair so nappy? <laughs> why she got on those shoes? Because I just came from the gym. Why is she walking like that? You know, is her back hurting? You know, um, why is she going to that store? You know, why don't she go to this store? She got more money in that. You know, did she lose her job? And that's why she got a shop. At a... It's there. The proof is there. Just go to YouTube. Go, go to any social media site. Anybody who has mass following, you'll see anything that they put up. It's always something in there where people are just looking for opportunities to rip down and to tear apart. Your gifts create a platform for you, but creates a target. But what God has shown with us here is that as a body, we all have different functions, different graces, right? But the thing that's been tearing us apart as a body of Christ, and I said this at the beginning, is lack of unity. Unity is the big thing. If we could all come together, we could take over this world. If we could all come together, there wouldn't be so many denominations. 
And matter of fact, if there were a bunch of denominations, nobody would even care because it would be like, I still love you the same. Whatever your denomination is, then you flow in your gift, you flow in your gift, you flow in your strength, you do what you do, and we all work together as a body, right? But this is what happens. Instead of unity, we look for uniformity. I have to explain this. Instead of unity in the body of Christ, we're trying to create uniformity. Big difference. Unity is, hey, everybody, let's come together. We have one goal. I understand that we all have different ages. We all have different sizes. We all have different colors. We're all from different nations. We're all from different countries. We have different dialects. But the one goal, the one thing that we have in mind at the core and at the center is all of us love Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. And we love each other, so let's make this work. That's unity, right? But what we've been doing sometimes not everywhere, but in the body of Christ as a whole, we seek uniformity, uniform. Mm -hmm. We seek, okay, I know we kind of got this thing at the core, which is Jesus, but I feel like I want to do it this way. You know, I, I respect what Jesus did on the cross, but I, I, just, I just feel like, you know, Maybe, maybe, maybe we should go about it this way. Maybe we should go about it that way. Maybe we don't have to preach. You know, maybe we can just teach. But not just me doing my thing and we come to the same middle ground and the same core. But instead, if I teach and you preach, then I can't fellowship with you because you're a preacher and I'm a teacher. So we don't have anything in common. If, you know, I'm a little bit more charismatic and you're a little bit more chill then our churches can't come together because we have nothing in common. <laughs> I ain't trying to get in trouble, man. <clears throat> if, if for some crazy reason we believe that there are different routes to salvation, then I can't talk to you. I can't speak to you. We can't be in the same room. We can't even have a clear discussion about what we believe. Because I feel like you're going to try to brainwash me and I'm going to try to brainwash you. Right? We know the answer to this. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Right? But people will come up with all this crazy. It, it, it's kind of like this. If we say, hey, <clears throat> let's get together and let's do a rally to promote the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Everybody, we're going to be unified, all right? We're going to wear the same color. Everybody's going to wear the same color. Everybody's going to show up, and everybody's going to have on the color blue. Everybody say, hey, we're unified. Jesus is at the core. We've all come together, and this is the one thing that we want to do together. We're all going to wear blue. But then uniformity, <clears throat> uni uniformity says, hey, I know you, know you wanted everybody to wear blue, but let's try some different shades of blue. Which would be creative, but what happens is the different shades of blue now says, okay, I know we're all moving in this direction to go to Christ and we're all going to wear blue, but I want to wear a different shade of blue. So because I have on a different shade of blue, I'm not going to march with y'all. I'm going to create my own march, hmm. right? I'm still going to get to Jesus, but I'm going to create my own march, wow. right? So y'all can march on Saturday. I'm going to march on Sunday because I have a different shade of who, and this is, this is what the denominations are. They're different shades of Christ saying, my Jesus is white, my Jesus is black, my Jesus is tan, my Jesus is orange, my Jesus is red. I'm using colors kind of as a surface, but it digs so much deeper and we don't even want to comb into all the differences of the denomination. But that's exactly what it is. We have this one thing in common. We love Jesus, we love God, and we love each other. But then we allow everything else to get in the way. One of the worst things that you can do is put your mouth on a ministry that you don't understand. To put your mouth on a pastor you don't understand. To see a pastor, to see a minister, to see somebody fall from grace, not understanding the details, not knowing the background, not knowing the history, not knowing what happened except what you saw on the news, the reports that you saw, the gossip that you saw on social media, and then put your mouth on them because you think you know them. Mm.
Cause I, you know, I watch them on TV every week. So yeah, I could tell. I, I knew he was like that because I could tell by the way he talked and sometimes the way he moved around. You know, I could, I could just, I could tell that he had. So I'm not even surprised, right? There's a term. I'm gonna get ready to finish on this note. There's a term called um, in the military called collateral damage, <clears throat> and it's similar to just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What happens is. <clears throat> If, you know, I'm out working and, you know, say, you know, I'm out in the desert and a scorpion crawls on my foot and I see that I'm about to get bit, instead of just kicking the scorpion off or instead of just smacking them or instead of, you know, me just getting bit on my foot and just kind of taking care of it, instead, I take out a double barrel shotgun and I just blow off my entire leg, right? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense, right? I'm going to take out a whole limb. Right? Because I don't like what's going on on this one piece. I'm going to take out a whole ministry, right? I'm going to go join the church, and I don't like what the pastor is doing, and so I'm going to join the church, and I'm going to create a whole bunch of discord. So it's never come out in your mouth before. But what this court looks like is, this is what the pastor said. Yeah, I know that's what pastor said, but this is kind of what I feel. That's this court, right? That's collateral damage. Mm -hmm. That is, instead of me dealing with this little issue that I have, I'm just going to blow up everything around me, right? Instead of going, I'm about to dig deep, y'all. Instead of dealing with my personal issues and working out my own salvation, right? Instead, let me work it out through somebody else. Let me go ahead and do my surgery on you. Because if I can create a perfect you, then I'll feel like a perfect me. Right? Ooh, that's ugly. And that's what happens when we see these other ministers, teachers, pastors, right? They're loving in their lane. They're doing what they've been graced to do, even though it doesn't look like what you have been called to do. But then we say, you know what? I don't care what he's saying. Let's just throw the baby out with the bathwater. We gave the we gave the baby a bath, right? The baby is now clean, but it's still sitting in dirty water. If you understand what I'm saying, you clean the baby. The water is now dirty, but you still got to pull them out the water, right? You you clean them up. The water is dirty, but then you just throw the baby out instead of just throwing out the water. The baby's clean. Wipe the baby down. You know what I'm saying? But what we do is we put our mouth on these ministries because we don't understand them. We say, you know what? I don't understand what they're doing, so I, I just don't care. Whatever. They, they can do whatever. Or you, you say different things to drag other people into and say, hey, you shouldn't go to that church because I heard. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't talk to that minister because I heard or I saw. You'd be surprised how many things are just gossip. Y'all might be surprised when you get to heaven how many people actually made it there that you put your mouth on. You might be surprised at how many people fell from grace that God actually redeemed. You might mess around and be looking up and not looking down on people. <laughs> you might. I think we'd be really shocked if we were to find out what God has graced different people to do. You might be looking at somebody's ministry and you might say, uh, y'all only got five people in part of y'all's ministry, but guess what? Those five people that I just ministered to are future ambassadors for the world. Those five people are now going to go out to the nations and make missionaries out there in other nations and are going to create disciples in other countries around the world. Now, if we're speaking from a natural perspective, from a business perspective, that pastor would get royalties from, that, from those five people that he sent out to evangelize and to disciple the rest of the world. But you're looking at the five people that they got right there. So let's bring it home. We're going to end on this note. Let's bring it home. So even you at your job, even you at school, even you wherever you are, you find yourself like, ah, oh, you know, this is, isn't really a big deal. You know, I just talk to someone. I just encourage them every once in a while. People are like, oh, leave them alone. You know, they, they a mess. Like, they don't affect you. And you go to the person and, hey, man, you know, I just want to let you know the door is open. If you ever need to talk, I just want to encourage you. And it's, you know, it's, it's so little, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time. But that one person could be the very person that once you encourage them, will turn around and go encourage 15, 20 other people in return. 
Meanwhile, you're getting discouraged because you're looking at the person who's on stage encouraging millions, right? Encouraging millions, but having no weight in their words. Their words are just going over the people's heads. Nothing is hitting their heart, right? Because their heart behind pushing it out is just the numbers. It's not, hey, I want to reach you because I believe that God wants you saved and I love you just like Christ loves you and I want to see your life change. They're just pushing out because they want numbers, but you're pouring out of your heart to this one person who in turn will go minister to millions. I've heard stories of people ministering to this one little kid who nobody thought was going to be anything, and then they grow up, and now they got a worldwide ministry ministering to millions of people all over the place. But you go back to that one person who took time to say, hey, you know, let me take you under my wing. Let me encourage you. That's one person that they encouraged, but in turn, they went and encouraged a whole bunch of other people from there. That's all I want to do tonight is just encourage you to love in your lane. Whatever God has graced you to do, whatever he has given you, whatever gifts, whatever talents float in that thing, they're going to come fiery darts once you're elevated. People are going to say stuff. People are going to think stuff. People might be streaming right now. People might have got on for a couple seconds and said, hey, he ain't talking about nothing, and they hop right off. People might have wanted to comment, and they're like, mm, I know he got a few people on there that are probably trying to get me if I say a bad comment, so I'm probably not, but I'm going to send them a nasty message a little bit later. Whatever it is, when you start using your gifts, you create a platform, and people will shoot for you, but you're covered, because within that grace, and I said it a couple weeks ago, if God has given you a grace to do it, then that grace also comes with everything that you'll need to be prepared to take on everything that will come against you. Even if for some reason you quote unquote fall from grace and you mess up, guess what? He put that in the plan from the beginning. He had already took that into consideration. This is as far as they might stumble. This is as far as they might fall. This is the worst case scenario of how bad they can mess it up. And he already factored that into the equation when he graced you to be able to do it. Glory to God. We're going to get ready to end on this note, and um, we'll open up the floor in a second. Uh, live streaming audience, um, if you're ever in the Charlotte area, feel free to join us right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, University City, at University Meadows Elementary School in the Media Room. This is where we're pushing it out. People who are in the area, feel free to join us. Um, this next part, we are going to get ready to shut it down, but not quite yet. Um, if you would like to... Uh, so if you would like to give and, and pour into what we're doing here in the Charlotte area, <clears throat> which last week we said that we were going to, um, we're going to give to some families, and I want to share with y'all what we're going to do exactly um, right after we finish up with the stream. But we are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we did set aside some funds to, to bless some families in this area, and that's exactly what we're going to do for the Christmas holiday. Excuse me. Um, but if you would like to give, if you would like to be a part of what we're doing here, you can go to our website at flowinglife.org, and there is a button on there where you can give online. We appreciate all the seats. Um, we appreciate your support, even online. Thank you for tuning in. We love you, and we will catch you the following week. We will not be here next week, but we will be here the following week. Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Thank you for watching. We hope that this message has blessed you. And if it has in any way, please feel free to write us in the comments box or even send us an email. Also, if you would like to sow or give to this ministry, we have some awesome things going on. Please feel free to go to our webpage, www.flowinglife.org. Until our next word, be blessed.